Hey everybody, hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Press the bell icon as well. And also check the top right eye for even more nice links. Today is all about more fun stuff. I can't really get into exactly what we're gonna do, but we're gonna do a lot of stuff. Add a few small changes as well as big ones. First things first, I added the config filter here in my project and I added all the any files into that. So we can easily change these. I'm gonna just go ahead and do 144 here because I have a 144 hash screen. Now, if you have something else, you can put it there. And I still recommend you use the same frame rate that I'm using. This is the frame rate lock, basically, just so we have the same speeds on everything. Even though we're using Delta time, sometimes stuff can be weird. So it's always good to have it like this. And you're going to have to forgive me today, guys. My, I bit my tongue really hard, so I'm speaking kind of sluggish, but I'll do my best. The next thing I want to do is I want to open up melee-weapon.cpp here and I want to go into where it says generate and I want to go here and say 70 here instead because 50 is a little too small of a range when you're trying to debug stuff and play around. So 70 is good as a generate. We're going to change this later probably and, and depending on the weapons level and all that. But for now, this is fine. Another thing I really, really want to do is add a debug text variable where we can add a lot of things like the mouse position, maybe how many active enemies there are, all kinds of things that we can see on screen to debug. And it's a very good thing to have. And we can easily just move that away or stop rendering it whenever we don't want it. So I'm going to create one of those. I think I'm going to create it right below the key time max right here. So SF text debug text, very simple. And we have the font already. So we'll just set that. And to set all these things, I'm going to go ahead and do that under init key time. I'm going to say void init debug text. And we're going to define this very simply. Before we do anything, though, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to just create one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and create a let's see where I want to do that. I can do that right at the bottom here. Void update debug text const float DT if we want to debug DT or see how much DT is. And then rendering will be done in the main render function. So let's define this as well. Before you guys forget or before I forget, I'm going to go to the constructor for game state and I'm going to call that function that we created this init debug text right below my init key time. So make sure you call it. Otherwise, you're not going to get any good results here. Let's go down to where we defined our update debug text and right below it should be the update function. I'm going to always update the debug text no matter what. So that's why I'm going to do it right below update input update debug text and then send in your DT variable. If you want, you can do it at the bottom, but I'll just do it right here. It doesn't really matter too much. Now, once everything is called, let's go ahead and just initialize this. We haven't rendered it yet, but we'll remember that. Let's say this debug text, this debug text dot set font. And then we already have a font. So font. Let's duplicate that line and let's say set fill color. You can set this to whatever you want, but I'm going to set SF color white and use set fill color and not color because I, that's deprecated. And one more thing, character size. And we're going to set that to maybe 16, something like that. Set character size. Now you have initialized your debug text, but we haven't really set a string to this. We'll set the string in here in the update. One more thing I forgot actually is that the position. So the position is very important because we don't want it in the top left. We want it a little offset here. Set position. Let's set it to 15.f. And let's go ahead and say this view.get size dot x dot y divided by 2.f you can use the view or you can use the window we can actually use the window instead window dot get size dot y sorry that is a pointer so we're gonna do get size dot y like that now you'll have a nice position for it in the update function i promised you guys we were going to update it so the few things i want to update with it or update in it that is going to be this debug text dot set string and we're just going to say ss.string. We haven't created the ss variable yet, but we're going to do that right here. std string stream ss. And it's into this we're going to just put everything. So first of all, what I want to update is I want to update the mouse position in the view because that's good to see sometimes. Mouse post view like that. And let's say this mouse post view dot x space this mouse post view dot y and then a new line but we're not going to end it right there we're going to keep working i want to see how many active enemies there are right now so we can debug if that calling is working if they're off screen that they're being deleted dot size new line i also want a direction but i'll do that later this is a good start i want a direction from the player to my 
mouse, but we'll get to that in a minute. So this is a good debug text. Let's go ahead and render it. So I'm going to render it above everything. Debug text. I'm going to say this render texture dot draw debug text. Now if we run this, it's looking real fine. So we can see we have two active enemies and then the mouse position in the window or the view is perfect here. So we can see exactly where it is. This really helps us debug stuff. Another important fix that we got to do because our level thing isn't really working properly is this exp next update and this formula is incorrect. I'm going to actually just go ahead and paste the new upgraded formula here. So let's see, let's remove that and let's cast that to an integer. I think we're missing one of these. So this is the correct formula. Just pause the video and, and retype this and you'll get a much better value for your levels. Let's go down to our update level as well and just you remove everything and just paste that over just over that and you have a much better exp next value every time you level up this will be updated so that's why we need this ignore this you don't really have to worry about it if you really bug that bike and do u int 64 here for the 400 value actually you know what let's do that let's do that in the constructor as well and then that green thing will disappear and there you go we often have to get all of our components for our player or our enemies and it's getting really tough. So what I want to do is I want to create getters for these five components right now. We're going to do that for the other ones as we add them, but let's just add them right above here in the accessors. So no cons, nothing like that. Just you can do virtual if you want. You don't have to do virtual either. So let's see the first one, get movement component like that. And all it's going to do is just return a movement component pointer movement component pointer like that and we will end that let's duplicate this and now we're gonna do animation component animation component get attribute component skill component like that and then ai component but we're not gonna keep ai really we're going to make another type of ai system can remove that ai component let's go ahead and define these we're just gonna do these four remember we don't actually have an ai component as of yet but these four will do for us right now and it's tedious work i know but it's going to be pretty quick all we're going to do in here is we're just going to return this movement component animation component attribute component and skill component perfect so when these are defined we'll easily be able to access these from outside while we have entity open there's a few important things I want to do and that is because I want to shrink the hitboxes for the player and the enemies we want a way to get the center of the sprite even if if we shrink that that hitbox component so if you look here what happens when you get a position or something is that it checks if there is a hitbox component we return the hitbox component center no matter what you do otherwise it will return the sprite what I want is a simple way to get the center of the sprite or the hitbox component so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to say get sprite center and then also a get sprite position not the hitbox components position and that's the most important thing that you can do because we're going to be switching these things around and it's going to look really weird if you don't have stuff on the sprite center so let's go ahead here this is going to be very very simple actually all we're going to do is we're going to just copy this sprite center thing like that so what it, basically what it does just returns the position plus a vector where yeah we get the center basically and getting sprite position is even easier all we have to do is return the sprites position boom bam so there you go guys perfect now let's go to shrinking the player's hitbox so open up your player here go to your player cpp and you'll see we create the hitbox component and here we have a bunch of values i'm going to change these so you just take the same ones i have if you want depending on what sprite you're using i know some of you guys are using different types of sprites but just go ahead and shrink it so it looks more like a you know better better hitbox for your player so it's not the whole sprite all that transparent area isn't collidable so that feels a lot better as well in a game i'm gonna turn on hitbox rendering for all our dudes because I, it's time to debug this and make really good values here so we get a good one so i'm gonna run this with these on true in game state render function just go down and put these to true here for the enemy and the player render and you should be seeing this better nicer hitbox for your player and you can see the enemy still has a huge hitbox compared to what the rat is and we don't like that so we're going to be changing that soon as well so in our center in our player update you'll see that we're getting center here what i want to do is i want to get sprite center the new function we created and this will allow the sword to be at the center of the sprite and not the hitbox that looked a little weird so we're going to actually hard just hard code this um, i'm going to do a sf vector 
2F and we're gonna split this up a little bit because we really want it exact. We don't want the sword on someone's face or the player's face. We don't want the sword down by the crotch area because that just looks weird. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this up. It's only the Y area we're gonna have to change and I'm gonna put it down a little bit, maybe 5.F, another parentheses here and we run it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to this. I'm gonna add, actually add five to this and we'll see it'll look a little better. So it looks a little better, it's by the chest, you know, it's, it's a lot nicer, I think. If you open your entity.cpp and entity.h, you'll find a function called get distance. And we just moved the sprite for the sword, but we haven't actually fixed this where we actually want to get the range from the center of the sprite to whatever is going on. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to copy paste this in the cpp file. I'm going to say get sprite distance. I'm going to add another function called get sprite distance here. And also, this will also force us to get the center of the sprite. And I'm going to use my get sprite center here instead on all of these. And that will give us the distance between the sprite. The final change for this would be to go here in the game state and go down to wherever you're updating combat. And you'll see we have a if statement right here where we're checking get distance. So I'm going to do sprite distance instead. And we're going to get the sprite distance between these. And if you look now, the range will be a lot better no matter where you are. I mean, from what side. And it's going to be a little better for us if we stick to the sprites. There you go, guys. It's been an interesting video. Uh, a lot of fixes today. We're going to keep working on stuff. I, 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 you know, I got a lot of things lined up. So don't worry. It's going to be really fun. We're going to add a new enemy. And we're going to add some items, all this stuff. And I have uploaded with this episode all the stuff that we're going to need. All the item uh sprites and all the icons and everything so hopefully you're gonna like that guys and thank you for sticking with me thanks for checking this out hopefully everything is going fine drop a like subscribe drop a comment as well join the discord if you guys want we we'll always hang out over there and yeah thanks see you in the next one Bye bye